Hey guys, Coach Chad here. Thank you very much uh, for downloading the Airbike document or the Airbike PDF. Just a quick outline of what you are going to have in the following 16 pages or so of information. We start off the document with simply learning how to set up your Airbike appropriately. And this really goes down to setting up the seat height and distance from the handles. And then after that, we discuss some pedaling mechanics as well as your push and pull mechanics of of the handle. Now, if you want to become a true rock star on the air bike and maximize your capacity, you've got to first learn how to set the air bike up to you as the individual. Now, if I'm speaking to coaches, you guys have to work with your athletes to get the appropriate uh, positions. And as an athlete, you should know your positions as well. So I've outlined how to appropriately set up the air bike for peak performance. And then after that, I've outlined nine specific workouts that you can train and work on that would be specific to different energy systems and different goals of training. Now, all of these workouts are simply little snapshots or um, uh, one, one session training blocks to give you ideas of how you can put some training together. Uh, I have not outlined in more detail the actual training programs that you'd be able to utilize and how you could progress them over time. But you as a coach or an athlete would really be best served to take an opportunity to just play and mess around with these workouts and look at all the different variables and ways that you could enhance and progress these workouts. And it's always important that you look at what energy system you're training and what the goals of your training session are. Are. So in many cases, you might want to increase the rest interval or decrease the rest interval, depending on the output of that you're training. You may want to increase the circuit length of the circuit volume. You may want to increase the length of the work capacity. There's lots of different places that you could uh, change and manipulate and progress these workouts. Um, these are just ideas that you can start to build off of in your long-term progression of training. Now, a couple of things I also want to make note of, which I think are important when we discuss discuss energy systems, um, energy system training, is that there's no real easy way to say what exact energy system you're training. And most importantly, you have to understand you're never training one energy system, you're training all of them uh, at one time. Now, because this entire document is based solely on the air bike, we do know that we have a systemic output on no matter what we're doing, because we are utilizing the whole body in this these training uh, workouts. And what I mean by that is generally within energy system training, you think of having three energy systems. You have your ATP PC, which is your anaerobic alactic system. Then you have your glycolytic or lactic system, and then you have your aerobic system. Now, underneath each one of those systems, you then have two tiers. You have power and capacity, which are two different training outputs on each one of those. So then it could be argued that there's actually six potential energy systems that you're training. Then if you want to get a little bit deeper and uh, more nuanced, you then get into whether or not the energy system is localized or systemic. Now, like I said, in this case, in this document, if you use these intervals in other ways, in mixed modal capacities or in crossfit capacities, you just have to understand you may end up changing the potential um, uh, outcomes or results of the energy system training, but I but I actually encourage you to do so and play around with it. But because of the, all of these sessions are set up and designed for the air bike, then we can assume that all of these are systemic um, energy system outputs. Okay. Now the other thing with energy systems that's important to note is that it really depends on your as a athlete or as a coach to note what athlete you're working with, what their training backgrounds are, what their potential power output and strength are, because those will highly dictate what energy system or what uh, rest intervals you may want to give your trainee. So there's a lot of flexibility, a lot of gray area when we talk about energy systems. So it does require a little bit of a, a flexibility and playing on your end to put this together appropriately. So don't get too caught up on the titles that I have inside of the workouts, because they may or may not apply to each individual individual athlete. But as long as you have some general concepts behind it that you want to understand, the, basically the concept of power and capacity, power is essentially training the max output of a certain energy system. And in order to train it, you need maximal recovery. So for most people, when they train power, they actually feel like they're ready to go before the rest interval is done. But it's important that you fully rest so that every work interval that you complete has a very similar or the same maximal power output. If you're having a decline in your potential output, either on the bike being calories or wattage, total wattage, then you're most likely dipping into capacity work, which doesn't 
doesn't make it wrong, but again, it just depends on what your goals are, okay? So traditionally, power work is seen as a little bit more um, lengthy in time domain uh, that you're gonna be putting in and maybe possibly a little bit boring. Athletes will traditionally be kind of chomping at the bit saying, let's go coach, I wanna get back in there, I'm ready, I'm, I'm ready to go. But again, you have to provide the appropriate rest interval in order to come back in and, and repeat the effort again to train the power aspects of the certain energy system. And then if you're working capacity, there will actually be a drop off in performance from round to round and circuit to circuit. Um, and that's to be expected. But what you have to maintain as an athlete and as a coach is a, an appropriate amount of drop off within that training system so that you don't shift the energy system too much to either an aerobic uh, capacity or a lactic capacity uh, variation, depending on what energy system you're training. So you want to make sure that you don't have any more than a 10 to 20% drop off, depending on the training session within your work output in your specific intervals. Uh, so an example might be if you were working on um, uh, anaerobic lactic capacity, and you, uh, well, actually, let's use pow uh, power as an example, anaerobic lactic power. If you shorten your rest intervals too much, then guaranteed you're not going to get sufficient recovery. So you're going to be coming back in and you're going to end up working capacity a bit more than intended. Whereas if you're working capacity, anaerobic lactic capacity, and you start providing much, much too short of rest intervals, you're just going to shift your work output to more aerobic uh, capacity. And again, uh, it doesn't make it wrong. It just makes it a different training focus and a drift different outcome so a couple of things you may want to take into consideration is just um is taking in you can use heart rate monitors and things like that but the best thing is just to look at the um the response of yourself as the athlete or from a coaching perspective look at the response of the athlete after the intervals um if you're doing aerobic capacity intervals and you're doing 30 on 30 off as an example and your athlete is just hunched over grabbing the knees and hacking and uh, really having a tough time catching your breath you're most likely working at a higher intensity that isn't going to work into the capacity intervals based on the way they're set up so again you're going to want to take this into consideration when setting up these uh, programs um, either way i won't go into much more detail than that i hope that that gave you a little bit of insight into um, uh, optimizing the workouts that are below uh, what i recommend everyone do is just simply try the workouts play around with them and uh, incorporate them into training and and have some fun with them and if you have questions communicate with us at any time we would love your feedback all right guys thank you very much once again for downloading this document and uh for supporting synergy strength and all that we do and i hope that you enjoy some of the workouts below you guys have a great day and uh stay cool guys uh continue living better through strength thank you